I'm Steve Bodley. I teach eighth grade physical science. <coughs> My name is Brad Schreiber. I teach eighth grade social studies. My name is Tammy Miller, and I teach ELA. Students need to end up seeing a relationship between uh, what's going on in math and science. Science is basically applied math. When you are told to go to your stations, that's where you're going to One of the ways to inspire kids to get involved with uh, their math class is to give them a reason why they need to. It's an opportunity for the students to be involved in real-world scientific data collection, scientific experiments to determine the health of the Conodomitic Creek. Awesome to see the kids becoming scientists. They were uh, working with a chemical test. They were, you know, analyzing data. They were counting critters that they saw on rocks. They were actually in the stream working on a flow test. It was a really, it was really cool to watch them actually in the field doing this. I wanted them to be practicing measurement. How do you measure the health of a stream in our local area? and how that actually affects the, the uh, organisms that live there too. I give them some test kits where they're actually doing, they don't know it, but they're doing a titration to use simply a color matching scheme. When they take their water sample, uh, the vial will change color and then they simply have to match the color to a particular other sample vial. It's more right here. Yeah. That looks too light. It looks bad. Yes. Did you find it? No. Sort of. Is that good or bad? Yeah. You did it right. Then they come away with, I actually can do this. It's sort of astounding to some of the students right away. And they, they feel like that I'm doing some real science. The acid rain problem, uh, we had to do an alkalinity test, which basically tests for the chemical that we found in, in any kind of rock that would neutralize an acid. So uh, something like a limestone would end up having, uh, would generate a higher alkalinity. Have to watch because it's not going to bubble over like a bulky. Okay, I'd say number three is a no result. Ooh, what is okay, it? so oh, there's a little creature crawling out of it though. That can happen. Okay, so we got yeah. one positive, two negatives. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Like a drop or two should be enough to produce a result. Ah, oh, check it out, right? Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, we're saying limestone. So we have two positives there. Them, it? <laughs> it's not smoke. Do you know what it is? Uh, water vapor? Nope. No. Um, it's carbon dioxide. Okay? Because the rock is going to be made up of calcium, carbon, and oxygen, and nitrogen. They get that, that real world hands-on experience. They, um, we, can, we can teach them about you know, the, the flow rate, we can teach them about the uh, experiments with um, chemicals, and we can teach them, we can show them the different critters that they might experience. But giving them an opportunity to go out and become the scientists themselves makes this assignment or makes this project, makes this trip more enjoyable for them, also more enjoyable for me. We took a risk. This was definitely a risk of, you know, walking kids into, you know, this particular stream. It's not as convenient as having them cluster around their desks in, in the school building, uh, yet it's far more uh, impactful. And years later, they will talk about simply a day at the creek. They've gone to the creek many times, but they haven't gone to the creek to do math and science. And this is what they usually walk away with. That's what I really enjoy is hearing not only the students, but also teachers saying, hey, I, I know this makes a difference for, for students.